video is brought to you by Skillshare. All right, just finished the first one. I thought it turned out pretty good. Um, obviously, it's not perfect. The hardest part for me was getting parallel lines to be the same, uh, I mean, parallel to each other. Uh, perspective is a little off, but I was really surprised. Once you start putting color on this, it actually starts to look, I don't know, like somewhat of a professional sketch. This is not supposed to be a photorealistic picture of what the client has ordered. It's just supposed to give them some sort of like a visual representation of the idea in their head. That way, when you deliver it, you know, it looks way better than a little sketch. I really like the way it turns out. I kind of like the sloppy sketch style of the the fine point pens. I really think I should go down to maybe the 0.1 or maybe even the 0.05. Really, really tiny and you just sketch a ton of lines, you get your form right, and then you go back in with a thicker uh, water ink pen and you make your bold lines, get everything straight, parallel, and square. And then you go back in and block in the color. And again, it's not supposed to be perfect. I don't know, for my first try, I think that was pretty good. So I'll just keep practicing. This one was a little better. Uh, I just wanted to see what this gray color would look like trying to represent white. Um, this is actually white in real life and I think it does a really good job of making it not the color of paper, but still showing that it's going to be white. Alright, so the next one that I'm going to try is uh, the modern plywood challenge, the, the Rockler plywood challenge modern herringbone coffee, di this thing! That's the next thing we're doing. I want to try to get some, integrate some sort of pattern, like the herringbone pattern on the top. So I'm going to maybe try to do like a top view of the coffee table and see if I can't get that to look good uh, with the pens and colors. So I'm improving a lot just between the, the first one and the second one. So this is pretty promising.
So you're probably wondering why we spent $1,500 on a brand new iPad when Davis's sketches weren't even that good in the first place. It's a little harsh. It was a little harsh. <laughs> we'll be okay. Anyway, uh, so the answer is because we're trying to reduce the amount of friction in the sales process. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for our customers to, to commit and follow up with their intention to spend money with us when they're buying furniture. This is probably like the most important piece of information we teach in the programs is it's we call it the golden hour. And basically all we mean by that is like you, you pretty much have an hour from the time that you close the idea with the customer to get them a contract, get them a picture of what it's going to look like and have them to sign and commit to buying it. So we've just tried to speed up that process so they don't think on it too long and we can get all the changes out of the way right up front at the very beginning. And you can go ahead and just start working on it without wondering, oh, is the deal still going on? Like, are they actually going to commit? Yeah, was that the buy? final idea? Is that what it's going to end up looking like for real? Because if you're just leaving your customers out in the open and they're like, oh yeah, well, I'll ask my husband or I'll ask my wife mm -hmm. about it, you'll never hear back from them. So we try to use the golden hour to sort of put a timer on ourselves as well as mm -hmm. our customers of like, hey, if you're interested, great, let's sign a contract. Yeah. If you're not interested, Maybe I don't want to waste my, I don't want to waste my time with you. Yeah, and this is just gonna help us close that deal down even faster. What we used to do was we would agree on a price, we would agree on the size, shape, and form, and a few features of the project that they wanted us to build, mm -hmm. and then we would run to SketchUp, draw it up really quickly and sketch up, like not super accurate, but just enough that they could get a, a picture of what yeah. it would look like. And that worked out really great, but there's some times where there's a little bit of back and forth, like, oh, well, I really meant I wanted white legs instead of black yes, legs, like stuff little like that. Details. Mm -hmm. But if you're sketching it right in front of the customer, and I understand that's gonna be hard on us to learn how to sketch, but if we can learn how to do that, we can close those deals down instantly because yeah. the customer will say, oh no, black legs. And then okay. instantly Got it. I can change okay. the color I'm using and everything is yeah. fine. So we use an iPad because it's so much easier to erase and start and you know fix mistakes instead of having to start the entire drawing over again. So that's the bottom line. We're doing it so we can close deals faster. Like you can physically draw it yes. and answer all those questions. So there's no more back and forth. You agree to a price, close the deal and start building. So we actually had one of our friends come over, Alyssa. She's bought a ton of stuff from us. Yes. She's been one of our best customers. So she decided that she wanted to help out with the channel and we're basically just gonna sketch some ideas with her. Um, I, I'll just quit talking. Hey everybody, uh, this is my friend Alyssa, well our friend Alyssa. The whole idea with this video is that we're trying to show you that it's very difficult for just an average customer. How much woodworking experience do you have? None. None. Okay, big fat zero. <laughs> so the whole point that we're trying to make is that like it's very difficult to communicate between average customer and woodworker. So what I'm going to do is you're going to see on screen a picture of something that she's trying to describe. I haven't seen it, Jenny hasn't seen it. but. She's gonna try to describe it to me and I'm gonna try to sketch it as best I can without her seeing what I'm drawing. That way I can just try to get in my brain what she's seeing in her brain. And then we're gonna do it again where she watches me draw it and she can sort of correct me as I'm drawing it in real time. That way we can sort of settle on the same mental idea of the piece of furniture we're going after. So let's go. What are we drawing? An end table. An end table. Like a nightstand. Okay. So is this going like by a couch or? It's gonna go by our bed, and I'm not quite sure the measurements. Probably should have taken them before I left, but it's our bed probably comes up about my waist high, so I'm not quite sure what that is measurements. We can measure later if we need to, um, but probably waist high. I'd like it to have four legs, um, and I like to have two drawers. Um, I don't know how deep, but deep enough for like a book or. Um, I don't know, odds and ends, really. Okay, you said two drawers? Mm-hmm. Okay, what else? Uh, I like it to be kind of dark, dark wood. Not super light, because our bed frame is is rather dark. Sweet, so we got a dark wood, two drawers, you wanted four legs on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, Sweet, so any particular style or any uh, like design style you're going after, like cool. farmhouse or modern or? Um, more modern. Uh, the one in the that I found on Pinterest has kind of the um, the drawers nestled in so whereas I guess the outline of the drawer is kind of out whereas the like I guess the drawer handles are flush with it rather than uh, the drawers flush with the outside and the handles poking out it's just kind of all kind of hidden okay I don't know if that makes sense 
I think I, I think I understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay, so we got, so nightstand, you just want one, I guess, well, I'm not actually building this. I, was, I would ask if you wanted one or two, I'm assuming two. Two, yeah. But, okay. <laughs> Uh, sweet. All right. Uh, so you want a dark wood? Do you want the legs to be metal or wood or any specific design for those? Metal would actually be really cool. It'd fit with the rest of the aesthetic in the house, kind of. Okay. Now what I'm doing is, um, for you not watching, I've already got a picture in my head. I'm just trying to draw that out right now, so it may get a little bit quiet, but through the magic of video editing, <laughs> you'll be able to see what I'm doing right now. Okay, does this look anything like what we were thinking? Yes and no. Okay, Which so what's what we're so what's different? So I should have told you that the legs, I guess, come in at angles rather than just straight down. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if we can annotate it on there, but the but the um, the handles being flush with the sides rather than like sticking out. And everybody else is like screaming at me on camera right now. They're like, no, you idiot. Oh, okay, you wanted the, the handles flush with the bezel. There you go. Okay, see? The bezel. <laughs> see, again, yeah. Okay, no, I really like that. That's actually pretty similar. It's pretty close, like it's really close. Yeah, but I mean, there's certain key elements like the legs being splayed out, that adds mm -hmm. visual interest. Obviously, you wouldn't be happy if I gave you the wrong type of handles that you wanted. Uh, that's that's why we do sketches like now honestly like this is not a real world scenario customers usually come to you with some sort of a picture or something to go off of but when you're doing custom work sometimes they don't even have that they just have an idea of what they want you need to be able to turn that into a reality so that's why we recommend learning how to sketch so we're going to do it again she's going to find another piece of furniture that she likes that we haven't seen before without showing me the picture she's going to kind of guide me through drawing it uh, this is a little bit more realistic to hopefully show you like what you can do with the power of sketching. What do we got? What are we what are drawing? Okay, so imagine kind of like a large rectangle. I'll start with a shape first. And okay. Then get... What kind of furniture are we drawing? Um, nightstand again. Okay. But just a different style. Okay. That can help display little cute things if I want, like little fake plants or stuffed animals or something. Perfect. <laughs> or books. <laughs> so yeah, it's That'd like a, great. Wow. Right. Yeah. So it's like a long rectangle. Okay. Is it longer? Um, tall ways. Tall, okay. Yeah, sorry. A tall so that's rectangle. fine. Sweet, then then what? So then it has a drawer underneath and then it's just open space. Okay. And there's like a shelf or something on the bottom mm -hmm. or okay. So we have a drawer right up here. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of legs is it? Did it like spin um, out? So it, it connects as a, as a box and then underneath it's metal. It's a four pronged metal that crisscrosses underneath. So it's like a little bit off of it. It's not touching. The floor, you mean? Yeah, the or, floor. Okay. And then this drawer, does it stop right here? Or does it keep going down? Um, it's kind of hidden in, the sides go all the way down, so it's just like an empty box. Oh, got it, so okay. So the drawer's in it. Okay, so this is a solid it. piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah. Square thing in the bottom? So it would be kind of like metal extends off of the sides on each of the four, but also about probably like maybe an inch or two, they have cross sections, just like a big X. If we were still building stuff, I'd love to make it for you. Okay, like that? Yeah. And, and then... Just whatever fancy handle I'd want. I like a fancy one. Right. Because you're so bougie. Because I'm bougie. <laughs> cool. And what color is this? Uh, the picture has it white, but I'd still want it to be dark. Okay. Like, like dark either, brown? Either like a black or dark brown. Ooh. Honestly, probably black to like give our room some color besides brown. <laughs> okay, cool. And then that'll be black and then that'll, that looks nice. Yeah. So let's see the final. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I had it a little too narrow, but I think that would I still think be that's, fine. I mean, our at least for our bedroom, it would have to be a little smaller than that right. to fit in our. Right, and that's so. the cool thing about custom stuff is like she likes that style, 
but I mean, you guys are looking at both pictures right now, but she likes that style, but she wants it a little bit narrower, which is cool. I mean, that's the whole point of custom stuff and it's okay that I didn't get it perfectly right, but I got it mostly right. Like that was really good how you explained it and we got to the bottom of what that X looked like because <laughs> there's no way in heck you're going to be able to describe that to me because I don't even know how to describe it. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And so what I would do is I would take this, we'd agree on a price and then I would just attach this in an email to the invoice I would send her. And then that would be on the contract to start work on it. And as soon as she signed back and said, Hey, that looks great. We'd get to work on it. So the right there, and then you can take this, put this in your 3d modeling software and actually come up with, okay, what is this dimension right here? But you don't have to worry about that when you're trying to close the client because now they just have a really cool drawing of what they're, they're expecting to get too. So that really helps manage their expectations as well, because you don't want a customer thinking they're going to get something. And then when you deliver it, it has absolutely nothing to do with what the picture they had in their head. So, um, this helps us answer a lot of questions before, you know, now there's money involved and there's emotions and stuff, but this right here, oh no, that looks bad, like change it. So anyway, um, everybody say thank you to Alyssa for helping. Uh, yeah, this is great. Wish I could buy it. Thanks Alyssa. <laughs> Now there's a ton of different ways you can do it. We bought an iPad because that's going to be the easiest thing for us to scale when we start hiring designers and employees to do sales for us. It's also easy to have it in some form of digital file that you can upload and put on a drive or wherever you keep all of your information and documents. I can go from a sketch to a signed contract on this iPad in like five minutes. Yeah. So this, this is the best tool, but if you're not doing that at scale yet or you know, you, you're only going to make a couple of sales a month. It's probably just okay to get just a pen and paper, honestly. And that's how we started too. Before we got the iPad, we're like, is this even a good idea? Is this weird? And then we started doing some sketches and we're like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. And we legitimately thought it would help with getting everybody on the same page before we started to build. And then after doing just a couple of drawings, we decided to invest in an iPad. There's affiliate links to all these products down in the description. Mm -hmm. You can just grab them right on Amazon. It's the stuff that we've bought and used and it's yep. worked really well for us. So if you're also curious on what some of those sketches look like, check out our Instagram. We do have probably I'd say four or five, six different pictures of different pieces that we sketched just as practice. It also helps manage their expectations. The whole idea with sketching is that the customer and you have the same expectations for the final product. You might be thinking that you're the kind of person that doesn't do sketching, you're not good at 3D modeling, you're not a visual person mm -hmm. yourself, but you like woodworking. Well, there's a lot of ways you can overcome that. I, the kind of sketches we're talking about are not detailed, like architectural right. drawings. These are just very rough ideas, size, scale, proportion, and color of what the final project is going to be. Mm -hmm. And anybody can learn how to do that. And one of the quick ways you can do that is using a product like Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can explore classes in everything from photography and creative writing to marketing, productivity, and more. We especially use it for illustration and graphic design, but you could also learn how to sketch. There's all sorts of courses where you can figure out how to pretty much do anything that you want to get your business up off the ground. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields to help you gain new skills and live your best life. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And Skillshare wants to give you two months of Skillshare Premium for free. No risk, you can cancel at any time. And all you gotta do is click the link in our description or go to this web address right here and you can get your first two months absolutely free. Again, we've used this product for two years now. So I found an interior design program. I guess it's fairly new to Skillshare, but it's really, really cool. I love interior design. I love just looking at a space, knowing what feel I want it to have and then finding pieces that fit into that framework. But there's a lot of people who that's like their worst nightmare is having to decorate a room or making their house match. And I feel like this course was really good at walking you through what color meant, um, what does balance mean? And once you understand those, it's not as scary anymore and they're just easy steps that you can follow. And before you know it, you can start doing those on your own. And as a woodworker who builds furniture, you're sort of playing the role of an interior designer if yeah. you're not working with one directly. So wrapping your head around concepts like interior mm -hmm. design, it's pretty much a necessity if you're gonna be running a woodworking business. So Skillshare is a great resource for yes. you to use. We've personally used them for years. It's really helped us wrap our brains around some of these skills that we need to operate our business. So one of the last things is you just have to practice this. Mm -hmm. um, even if you have a little bit of talent, you have to be pointed in the right direction and you have to sort of like 
You just have to break it down and practice. Practice what you're not good at. Draw things that you would never ever build. I went to Chris Salamone's uh, Four Eyes Furniture. I went to his Instagram page and started drawing a lot of his furniture. I don't ever plan to draw, uh, build anything in that style unless a client really wants it. But just to broaden my horizons, I started sketching some of his work. And I started drawing stuff if I had like an empty space on a wall or we had somewhere where we were thinking about like redoing our kitchen table, we practiced sketching up what we would want our new table to look like and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's the advantage of having an iPad pad is that you can take a picture of something and then augmented reality you can draw it on top of that to really show the customer what it's going to look like in their space. So this is really helpful if you do a lot of built-ins or large-scale stuff you can see how something fits in a room. So thanks so much to our awesome friends who helped us record this and who are our customers and they actually are repeat clients in real life. These guys are awesome. They wanted to help. They yeah. Asked, <laughs> they asked, they're like, can we be in a video before you guys move? So here is a couple more videos that you can watch from us and yeah, we'll hope to see you again. Thanks.